Let's make it a good day. Today on The Jason Show. As if she's not busy enough, Gail King is getting ready to take on yet another job. Where is she going? Then, the finale, like four of us have been waiting for. So brace yourselves. Producer Ted recaps. Because this is a rough one. The most dramatic. But. Season finale. I know, you don't have to say it. In Bachelor history. And one of the most interesting people I've met in years. Meet the woman trying to sing the national anthem at every ballpark in America. And she's darn close. The Jason Show starts right now. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Thank you, audience. One more time, say hello to my sidekick sister. It's Kendall Mark, everybody. Hi, 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 hi. hi. Hello, hi. lovely. Hi. How you doing? I'm swell. You're swell? I'm swell. You're How doing you? okay? I am fine as frog hair, thank so you. Nice. Yes. We, we look matched. So good. Yeah, we matched today. Wonder Twin Powers, what? activate. Oh, it's an old cartoon. Don't worry oh, about it. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what that means. Three Sorry. people in the audience got that reference. Sorry. It's okay. It's a Super Friends reference. They were these, Super Friends. Yeah, they were um, they were uh, in tights. It was a boy and a girl. They were uh -huh. in tights, and they had a monkey. And then they would go and and then they would go. Wonder Twin Power. Give me your fist. Oh, Wonder Twin Powers activate form of ice. And then this person would turn into ice, and then oh. you could say form of fire. Exactly. And okay. that was their superpower. That's yeah. cool. It was cool. They were nice. It was, it was very 70s. It so was very. Pre Power Rangers. Pre very Power Rangers. Mm. That's right. You're doing well, though? Yes. Um, Happy, what day is it? Tuesday? Today's, what is it? Is it Tuesday, Addy? It's a Tuesday? Tuesday? Um, I'm going to call this Bifocal Tuesday. So they are mm -hmm. in, I've been telling you, uh, the late 40s are kicking in. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to get bifocals for the first time in my life. Oh, you brought them in to I brought them, them, yeah. Okay. So, uh, but they're not called bifocals anymore. They want us to feel better about being mm -hmm. in our late 40s. So they call them progressives now. Oh, progressives. It's the same damn thing. They're bifocals. Okay. But they, they, you can't see them as much. So um, this is going to be exciting television. So they, these are my old glasses, okay? Uh -huh. And I'm going to... Now, can Magic. I... Now, let me temper the, the excitement here. Because the glasses I'm getting ready to put on... Are about one percent different from the glasses I'm wearing right now. Okay, you ready? Okay. Are you ready for this, Kendall? I'm so ready. Okay, there's. Hi. Hi. Okay, oh. There we go. Those are off. <laughs> oh, settle down. Here we go. Oh my God! I look like Ben Lieber now. That's right. <laughs> it's me. Magic. Wouldn't that be great if glasses <laughs> made you look better looking than you really are? Hey. Yeah. I wish I could. I'll take those glasses to make me look like Ben Lieber. Yeah. I can't see like the line, you know. Bifocals. Well, that's the new thing. That's what. That's why they're called progressives because oh. there's no line like my papa had. Okay. So now. How's it going? I yeah. like if I go like that, yeah. I can't. It's blurry. But if I go like that, the teleprompter's clear. You're going to have to go to that spice rack you were talking about. I know. Somebody told me to read store. spices. But no, I was out at dinner last night with today's guest, uh, who I'm very excited for you guys to meet, Annie. But we were out, and it was a perfect, um, what would you call it? Not control group. A perfect experimental place. Okay. I had to read a menu at a dark restaurant, mm -hmm. so I could do that. And as I'm looking at you, it's not, people scared me that I was going to hate it. I'm okay. I'm not dizzy. You haven't walked yet. <clears throat> <laughs> Wasn't that what it happened? You're such an encouraging friend. <laughs> You're such. Wasn't that what it happened? Okay, Eric, take the jib. Let me just walk around the desk and see if I'm going to fall. Here it okay, is. Okay, you ready? Okay. Because I just realized I didn't walk last night with me. See? Yeah, I see? didn't. See? You're going to fall? Don't use me as a prop. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I feel like this is a game of musical chairs. I'm telling you. <laughs> It's stuff seat. like this is the reason our ratings are so high. That's yeah. right, yeah. This exciting. is why we beat the view. Woo! Just, you know, to see Jason, he walked around his desk. That's exciting television <laughs> for everybody. Great. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to I'm going to try to do at least this segment wearing these. Okay. Uh, and see how this goes. God, we're an exciting show. Let's get ready, everybody. <laughs> Time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> The studio audience is thinking, why couldn't we come when he had other glasses on? You know what I mean? Other days. First up, CNN is looking uh, to add some star power to its primetime lineup because it's been in the toilet for a while. And they've zeroed in on two people. CNN is reportedly close to inking a deal with Gail King and Charles Barkley to host a weekly primetime show. It would go against the cable news trend of scheduling, you know, one show five nights a week with a single personality. CNN is talking with others about filling the remaining nights with special events like town halls and big get interviews. Gail would obviously still work on CBS on CBS uh, mornings. Hmm. But he, when I read this headline, I thought, okay, this would work. I thought Gail was going to just host five days a week. That I would be excited for. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is going to work. It's hard mm -hmm. to get people to get into a routine of watching a show when it's only once a week. You got to you got to build, you know, a routine in. That's why shows like this, we air five days a week mm -hmm. so we can make you part of the day. Right. Or, you know, we can make uh, we hope that we become part of your routine. I don't know if people are going to be like, oh, it's Thursday. I better turn on Gail and Barkley, you know? Yeah, unless Which it's Gail and Barkley sounds like a dog food brand. Kind you know of what does. I mean? <laughs> like snack treats. Anyway. I, yeah, unless they're doing some kind of news. Audience really liked that joke. Yeah. Thank you very much, audience. I like, thank you. Like news magazine type program. So, you know, you're thinking your 60 Minutes or uh, Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. That would be the only way I could see that. Real time with Bill Maher. Yeah, that, that's kind of the only way I could see people watching it yeah but most of those you just referenced are on premium cable mm. so people are used to that i think on a station on a network like cnn like larry king uh have that you know you tune in right uh, I, you know i'm not a big cable news guy i'm not you know but uh on on msnbc or fox people tune in to rachel maddow or they tune in to laura ingram you know what i mean mm. they, they make it it's like a nightly thing right i don't know look can Gail do this? Yes. Uh, can Gail get the big gets? Yeah, people like to talk to Gail like they used to like to talk to Oprah. Mm -hmm. um, and they still do talk to Oprah, but I just don't know if the once a week is going to work. And I think this combination is hilarious. Oh, like, I do too. Charles Barkley, love... he's so sassy, and she'd be like, <sighs> yeah. all the time. I <laughs> love Barkley. <laughs> Great. It's terrible. Uh, <laughs> next on the dish. Yesterday, we told you about Adele extending her Vegas residency. Well, listen to this. Kelly Clarkson wants in on the Vegas fun too and has an announcement of her own. Look. I'm going to be playing an exclusive Las Vegas engagement this July 28th through August 19th at Box Theater at Planet Hollywood. I'm only doing 10 shows. I, I could only commit to 10 shows. That's why it's exclusive. There's only 10 shows. I ain't had more. I'm telling you right now. Mama's, mama needs a little bit of a minute of a break. <laughs> so chemistry and intimate evening is something you can only see in Vegas. It's just for this show, just for these 10 shows. And tickets go on sale this Friday at Ticketmaster.com backslash Kelly Vegas. Okay. <laughs> Kelly surprised that fan with a free trip to Vegas. Kelly's one of those artists. She has a library mm -hmm. of hits that can fill a Vegas show. Oh, yeah. And now she she does so many things. It's not surprising. She's like, I can't do a full residency. Yeah. But she could also just entertain even if she's not singing. Like, she has a talk show. She's on The Voice. You know, Vegas she's is the thing, man. I mean, you know, it's these back stars. To like, it's back. Well, yeah. And it used to be in the 70s and in the early 80s, it was where stars ended their career. Mm -hmm. When they would hit a roadblock, in mainstream seriously. <laughs> seriously when Sonny and Cher broke up and Sonny and, and Cher uh, got you know the Sonny and Cher show ended I know this is a very old reference but I'm just saying <laughs> but no but I make but it's of the time Cher went to Vegas mm -hmm. when Tina Turner left Ike and started on her solo career she went to Vegas mm -hmm. it was where you either restarted or you ended your career right now the top stars that's where they're going right I mean they want to be in Vegas, mm -hmm. the great venues. Think about how easy it is, too, when you're that star. You're not traveling constantly. Yep. Your people are coming to you, and you're making so much money. So much money. money. You breathe. You go down to a slot machine. You don't even have to pull the slot machine to win money. Yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish.
We're learning more about the next season of the mega hit White Lotus. You know we love that show around here. The creator of the show has confirmed the third season will take place in Thailand. The first season was in Hawaii, the second place in Italy, the second one in Italy, I should say. Mike White, the grand poobah of the show, and his team are headed there right now to figure out the logistics. Why you just because I up. really want to go to Thailand and now it's going to be really, really hard to go to Thailand because now even more people are going to go there. Influencers. We got those white lotus people now. I, I got I'm just trying to save elephants in Thailand. You know but, what I'm saying? What they have animal rescues in Thailand. I know, but elephants. I got news for you. What? Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. Thailand wasn't a secret. I mean, you know, people, I mean. I, I got, people, people knew about Thailand before I, White Lotus. I, I mean, know, Dad. They knew about Italy, too, but it's going to be even more Did you more just call expensive. me Dad? Look, you gave me a Dad talk. Did you just call me Dad? You're wearing transitions, or whatever those are called. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to start crying and laughing so hard at the face you're making right now. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You picked a bad day to be sassy. <laughs> because my best friend, Lisa LaCourse, is in the audience. She can come up here in two seconds. It's true. Oh man, she might have to. I can't stop crying. <laughs> Lots more to come, but first. <laughs> Your chance to audition to fill <laughs> Kendall's position. No, seriously, a look at some audience photos from the past week. By the way, get your tickets to join in on the fun. Go to eventbrite.com and search for The Jason Show. Be in our audience. We'll be right back. Back in a hall. <laughs> Welcome back. The dramatic conclusion to The Bachelor aired last night. Thank goodness. Zach, uh, Zach is the guy. He was down to Gabby and Katie. And if the fantasy uh, suites were any indication, the finale was bound to get a little messy. So let's start with this. Here's Jesse Palmer setting the scene. Pastor Nation, welcome back. Well, it's already been a dramatic night, and trust me, it's now about to get a whole lot more dramatic. So the big question now, how will Zach's love story end? Is it going to be Katie or is it going to be Gabby? Because somebody is about to get their heart broken. And I was there and it was, um, it was very, very sad. So brace yourselves because this is a rough one. I wish I couldn't see that. You know what I mean? I wish I. Anyway, clearly, Jesse Palmer was still reeling from that final day in Thailand. <laughs> see, Kendall Bachelor knows about Thailand too. Yeah. So rude. So, how is our Bachelor expert doing after this audience three hour finale? Oh, no. It's like Return of the King. Uh, for the final time this season, Roll it, Leo. It's time for 42% of America loves Ted. Joining us from Bachelor headquarters is our producer, Ted Johnson. Hi, Ted. Good morning. How are you? A little tired this morning. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, it was a three-hour show, Ted. And they stretched that puppy out. I bet they did. Uh, so how was it? How was, how was the three hours structured? I, you know, so here's how it usually is. It's like you get two hours of the show and then one hour of the final after the final rose, but they just decided to incorporate the whole thing throughout. So the first part we get Ariel. Remember Ariel last week? Uh, she got dumped in the fantasy before, you know, they didn't go to the fantasy suite or they did go to the fantasy suite, but they didn't really go to the fantasy suite, if you know <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah. So she's basically saying, uh, I didn't get my money's worth. And so 
Uh, he's, you know, explaining, oh, yeah, yeah, I should have told you about the other fantasy sweep, but I didn't. And she's like, but why didn't you? And he's like, because I didn't. So there's that. So that, that, that took up about 45 minutes. What? That made no sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> so what you're telling me, let me play therapist. It's called mirroring back. If, what I'm hearing you say is that was an uncomfortable conversation with uh, the mermaid, uh, Ariel. Yeah, because she, she, he was saying that he decided to tell everyone about his fantasy suite with Gabby. And he told Katie, but he didn't tell Ariel. Okay. And Ariel believes she should have been told. Absolutely. Okay, so dude had a final date with the women. How did that go on the finale? Well, you know, they're, they're all in love. So, so, so he went out with, so Katie's up there and Gabby's down there and he's still visibly just torn. I don't know who I'm gonna choose. And Gabby down there in the bottom right. I see, I always thought Katie was the one he was gonna choose. So Gabby down there in the bottom right is like, you know, basically trying to poke and prod and be like, okay, but, but what are you thinking? He's like, I don't know, I don't know. And to which she says, uh, I don't think it's gonna be me. Oh, really? Yeah, she sort of had this feeling like, like if he knew it was gonna be her, she would have gotten a better vibe and then she didn't get that vibe back. So, okay, that was her thought. Let's get to the, the part we've been waiting for. Uh, the very end, the proposals. Who got out of the limo first? Gabby. It was very sad. It was very sad. Gabby got out of the limo and she was walking down this path, which by the way, they built like a, a half mile long path for her to weave her way through to get to this pedestal. And she, the whole time she's saying, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. It's, I've never seen so much uh, doubt from a one contestant uh, since ever. But, but here's how he dumped her, go ahead. Knowing you, falling in love with you has made me a better man. But I know you don't have to say it. I know. You don't have to say it. As much as uh as much as I've been falling in love with you. I don't want to hear it. Abby, I'm sorry. You deserve a man that picks you first every day. Can you stop? I'm sorry. Can you stop? I, you know, I feel bad for her, but you know what? She's actually the winner in all of this well, because she's a lot better off without him. Right. You know what I mean? And and I was thinking, you know, okay, so, she, so, he's dumping her, and she's telling him, well, you don't need to say it. Does he still need to say it? Yes, he does. Because he was like going on and saying it. She's like, stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, no, you still have to say it. You still, yeah. have, to, you still have to let her down. You know how TV works. ABC yep. needs him to say it. Yep. Yeah. So he chose Katie. What did, did she say yeah? Katie said yes. And it was a big yes. It was such a big yes that we can't show it to you because uh, my recording ran out because the broadcast was so long. But they did fly them overnight to GMA, and there they are in New York. It's her first time in New York. Look at, I mean, have you ever seen a couple look more in love than those two? Look at how far apart they're sitting. Yeah, the body chemistry is overwhelming. Yeah. And so, Lara Spencer, uh, Jeff's favorite, obviously, uh, they, she asks them, what's their plans? When are they getting married? And, and Katie was like, oh, Oh, slow down. Yeah, just like, uh, oh. we're going to figure things out here. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's translate that. They'll be broken up by the 4th of July. Yes. 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 That's we'll it. Never... Ted, thank you for a great season of The Bachelor. What do you, I know we got to go, but uh, what are you going to do now, Ted? You're done with this assignment. What, what's, what are you going to do? Well, we've got a, we're going to have a, a, up on the blog, we're going to have a full recap of the new season of Love is Blind, and then we've got uh, Hot Mom Manor. Ted uh, Johnson, everybody. Thank you.
Why did I ask him? I don't know. I don't know. Did you like it really quick? Did you like the finale? Yeah, I didn't stay for the whole thing because I fell asleep. And he didn't talk about this, but if you watch the show, their audio dropped for like three minutes. So everybody and their mother is going, is there something wrong with my TV? Oh. ABC like oh. dropped a bomb. That's fun though. I love that. Oh, oh I yeah. know. It was fun. Proof that it's live. Next mm -hmm. on the dish, it was the season premiere of Succession over the weekend. We talked about it yesterday. Now, so Jimmy Kimmel sent Guillermo to the red carpet. That is our late night rewind. Hi, it's me, Guillermo. I'm here for the red carpet for the show Subsection. 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 Subsection? Subsection. Okay, I don't watch the show, but it's gonna be fun. Hey, who's this guy? He's in the show? Hi, how are you? Very good, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Listen, I, I never watched the show. You never, yeah, I never watched it. It's not very good. Yeah, it's not. It's just a lot of chat. Yeah. So, what is the show about? It's about a media family, and it's also about a guy called Tom, yeah. uh, and his life. Oh, you and, play uh, Tom? He's really funny, sexy guy. Yeah, yeah. You play Tom? Yeah, he's great. He's like a very charismatic, is he heroic the, character. Is he the most handsome guy in the show? He is. Yeah. yeah. yeah he is. Wow. <laughs> so tell me, I don't watch the show, but tell me oh, what, well, is, what is I the show? I don't watch yours either. Go ahead. <laughs> what is the show about? It's about nurses. Yeah. And medical equipment and stuff like that. Succession. Succession? Succession. Succession. You got it. Succession. Succession. I love you in the Home Alone movie. You, not me. You were, named, you were a scary drunk? Mm -hmm. No, it was not you? No, no, no. No, some other guy. Oh, you. <laughs> Guillermo. That is fantastic. I don't watch the show, but what's it about? Oh, God. <laughs> it's great. I said that once to Amelia Clark. I was interviewing her for a movie mm -hmm. and I led with, and I, I, I think about this sometimes and I get horribly you get uncomfortable. Cringy? I sat down, she was, I go, hello, I go, lovely to meet you. I go, first question, you know, I'm not a big Game of Thrones fan. And she kind of looked at me like, that's what you're leading with? <laughs> yeah, rest of the interview was not pleasant. <laughs> uh, next in the dish, Lil Nas X hopped in the car with James Corden for his latest and probably one of his last carpool karaoke's. In addition to singing, the two also talked about Lil Nas's, uh, personal life look so how do you out. date how do you meet people raya is okay. use raya when did you stop using raya i think i stopped using raya like it just like it fell off for me and i just like started to like to meet people in person uh-huh and raya is just very famous everyone's famous on there i've met i've met um quite a few famous guys i I've, i think i've come me? to know that i don't like dating famous people. okay have any of them ever done carpool karaoke for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Who is it? Yeah. Why is it Michael Bublé? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Michael Bublé. <laughs> so I love me. I need someone who needs me. Cause it don't feel right when it's late at night. It's just me and my dreams. So I want someone who loves Here's what I really want, the list of everybody that's ever done carpool karaoke. Mm -hmm. So the research team, we can systematically go through it and figure out who he's been with. And it's not Michael Bublé. It's not Michael Bublé. <laughs> we have so much more ahead, including a special guest for the rest of the hour. Go get some more coffee. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Coming up in just a little bit, the dish is done, and for the rest of the hour, one of the most interesting people I've met in a long time. You will meet the woman trying to sing the national anthem at every ballpark in America. Plus, her day job is just as interesting. Meet Annie Egerton when we come back. Welcome back. I'm excited. You're going to love this. So uh, baseball season begins this week with opening day set for Thursday. Oh, it is. Oh, I got to get tickets anyway. Uh, while all te 30 teams are aiming for the World Series, one baseball fan and Broadway star has a different goal, very different goal to sing the national anthem in all 30 parks, and she's closer than ever to making that happen. Look. That's my friend. 
Annie Edgerton <laughs> singing the Star Spangled Banner in San Diego last fall. The 28th ballpark, friends. The 28th in her, I love how dramatic, the Anthem Quest. <laughs> Please welcome to the show my buddy Annie, everyone. Hi, thank Annie. You. Hi, thank you. Okay, I want to start off by how we met because it was totally by chance. Yeah. I was in New York with a group of friends, including uh, my fave gal pal, Lisa LaCourcier, mm -hmm. and we went to where you work. You work at a fabulous, fabulous lounge, I call it, bar? Oh, yeah. I don't work there. I just go there a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. But we, we met, and we, we instantly connected, yeah. like instantly bonded. And then Annie proceeds to talk about the various <laughs> tentacles of her life uh, and the various jobs. So tell them all of the things that you have your hand in. Oh gosh, how much time do we have? We do. <laughs> we have given you the back half of the show, so. Well, I like the back half sometimes, yeah. so. Um, <laughs> I uh, don't know what that means. Uh, I do, yeah. <laughs> I, so I work as a wine appraiser and consultant and a lot of things in the wine industry. I am a performer. I've been on Broadway, film and TV. I love to pretend to be other people for yeah. my job. Um, I am on this anthem quest. It's not a job, but it's a thing I've been pursuing for around 15 years. And uh, what else? I'm just finished writing a book. I might be starting a podcast. I don't know. There's lots. And <laughs> we're going to get into because I knew that you would find Annie. I, I meant it. What I what we said in the uh, the intro and the tease. She's one of the most interesting people I've met in the last few years because of your very lives. Um, we're going to get into the wine a little bit later because wait till you hear about that. But first, where where did this mission start? How did it start? Why and when? Well, I've been a baseball fan ever since I was in middle school. My mom got me into baseball. Yeah. And uh, I've been a performer around that time as well. And, you know, a lot of baseball fans have a bucket list goal of seeing a game in every stadium. By chance, a friend of mine got me uh, to sing for the Mets, which was my team, sadly, and uh, heartbreakingly. <laughs> it just is. It's a team that breaks your heart. And uh, anyway, when I went on tour with the Broadway show Mamma Mia, I sang for a couple other teams. And all of a sudden, I went, wait a minute, I've now sung for four teams. Maybe I should try to sing for all of the stadiums and do do that goal one better and so i've been trying so you were on number four when it kind of hit you yes like yeah. oh this could be fun i i was uh, at the nationals with some folks from mamma mia and one of the the contacts said that was great come back anytime and i went wait i can come back you want me to do this again <laughs> oh okay and so i did they're one of the teams that have i've sung for m multiple times Let's focus on the positive, but I do want to ask you a dishy question. Uh, what park has been, for whatever reason, in whatever category, friendliness of the, of the crowd, the facility itself, the magic, what has been some of your favorites to sing the anthem in? It's not just because I'm here, but the twins, y'all are the best yeah. fans. And he's not lying. I did set her up. We talked about this. We had dinner last night. Yeah. Annie's not be is not. No. Uh, no. Pulling your leg. It was so. I, I remember it was a beautiful spring day. My mom was there. The stadium was packed with people before the first pitch even went out, which hardly ever happens. And just the warmth was reverberating out from you know the stands onto the field. It was a really memorable experience. Okay. Now, other than how great we are, um, <laughs> is there one that comes in maybe second base? Well, I mean, I have to say, like, my heartbreaking team, I've gotten to sing for the Mets six times in both uh, Shea Stadium before it was torn down and then a few times in City Field. Six? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Do you get nervous anymore? All the time. Do you? Every time. If, I, if you don't get nervous, you're doing it wrong, I think. So. Because, I mean, it's a much different I, – I have thrown out a pitch once. Oh, there you are. At, is this – where is this at, Annie? Uh, this was for the Braves virtually in 2021 because uh, it was still COVID times yeah. and there were no people in the stands. Oh my good, look at you. That was the Orioles. I try to wear the colors of the team when I sing so it's easy to remember yeah. where I was. I, it's, uh, look at you. <laughs> because I, I, I was, oh, what I was going to say was I've thrown out a pitch before. So I, look, I don't get nervous doing this type of thing, but 
I there is a much and you you know what I mean. There's a much different feeling when you get to the mound or you walk oh. out on that field and you look at the stadium around you. It's it's unworldly almost. I'm, I'm getting nervous now and I don't have to sing. So, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it really is. And there's a lot of pressure with this song because even if 90% of the people in the stands don't know the words, if you mess up, they'll know. They'll know. And also, I always say to people, if you want to do it, just pick a key lower than you think you need because everyone will forgive a little, oh, say, but it, they don't want to get nervous when you're aiming for the high note that you're not going to make I it. I never thought about that. Yeah. What are the two teams, before we go to break, what are the two teams left? I said in the beginning, you have two teams left, where, or two parks. Where are they? Yes, Anaheim Angels okay. and New York Yankees. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Anaheim, uh, Yankees, the hell are you doing? Seriously, <laughs> call this woman right now. We'll put Annie's number and address at the bottom of your screen. Ooh. Sorry, you don't mind if we tell you where you live, don't you? No, it's fine. Not at no. all. Come by. No, we have much more with Annie. If you want to follow Annie's anthem journey, and of course you do, check out her website. Uh, it's anthemquest.com. Her personal website is annieedgerton.com. And singing isn't the only thing Annie is known for. <laughs> Let me tell you, this occupied most of two dinners that I've had with Annie. Her other big passion that'll make you go, really? When we come back, back in a moment. Oh, that's great. Oh. Welcome back. Talking to my buddy Annie. Singer, actor, singer, actor, bingo caller. She does it all. She's on a quest to sing in every major league ballpark in America. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit, but I thought you would love this. Besides singing and acting, Annie is also, and this is putting it mildly, a wine expert. Okay, can you briefly, in a Reader's Digest, let's set the table for folks. This is a family affair, right? Oh, yes. Uh, my father became a wine appraiser back in the early 80s, I guess. Uh, he created the first database of wine auction prices, and comparable pricing is what you use to appraise anything. So he became a wine appraiser, and he taught me how to do the job while I was pursuing performing so that I would have a day job that would give me some money. And it is a hell of a day job. These stories, you could sit and listen to Annie all day, but <laughs> give them like, okay, so when Annie says an appraiser, people hire you to do what? Like, like you go into estate sales or, yeah, you explain. Right, yeah. well, we like to joke that we get called for the three Ds, death, divorce, and disaster. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's usually when people need to know what their wine is worth uh, in instances like that. So I do insurance claims, I taste wine for damage, which, you know, tasting wine for a job sounds fun until it's been cooked in 90 degree heat for two months, yeah. then it's not fun. Um, but we, we do counterfeit investigation, we advise on collections and so forth. One of the most, and again, we'll do a TV version of it. <laughs> what was it, one of the cases that you had to do was a, 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 a bottle with Thomas to, about connected to? We were involved, I think we're allowed to talk about this. Oh, uh, no, not, no, I no, think no. it's a case and tell a case well, that you it's, can't talk it's, about. It's been, it's been written about, so, and, okay. and my our name, family name has been mentioned. So um, there was a billionaire who owned bottles that were supposedly owned by Thomas Jefferson, and there were a number of other bottles in his collection that the, the provenance became questionable. So we were involved in a massive, very well-known um, counterfeit investigation. What, what are some of the things you look for? I mean, is it like a font that's different or a label that seems, oh, that looks like it was made at Kinko's? Uh, actually, yeah. yes. Yes, for both of those. Um, count forgers are getting really clever now, and the technology, unfortunately, has gotten better. So with laser printing, that it, it's easier to fool people. Um, but we can zoom in and look and see if it was printed with a modern printer. Um, we look for appropriate paper, if there's brighteners, um, in the paper since they started putting them in since the 50s. We look for appropriate capsules, appropriate glass. Is the, the fill, the level right for the age of the wine? And a lot of other things. Trade and, secrets. Yeah, I'm trade secrets. And away. you can walk into, uh, we will not give it a specific example, but you can walk into a place and pretty much spot like, oh, that looks fake. I can certainly pick out one that looks questionable that needs more investigation for sure and a couple times I found one when I wasn't looking for one and that's problematic but uh, yeah you know they're out there they're out there mm -hmm. and and 
it, it's it, un, endlessly, endlessly fascinating. <laughs> and then also now Broadway. So let's <laughs> let's switch our last minute or so. Broadway. What shows have you been in? So my my big show that I've done a lot with was Mamma Mia. I did three different companies, including the Broadway company for on and off for three years. And that is a lovely show. I, I wore a lot of spandex. There's a box <laughs> with spandex with my name on it. I toured the country, so I actually played played here. Um, and then I toured the country and Canada and Japan with Kinky Boots more recently. So great. More yeah. with Annie when we come back. <laughs> back in a moment, everybody. Stay with us. Welcome back. Okay, Yankees. Okay, Anaheim. We're back with Annie, a singer and actor on a quest to sing at every major ballpark in America. Again, Annie's address is at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> Go ahead and write her immediately. Write uh, the Yankees, write Anaheim. I want to, a few more wine questions. We were talking during the break, and we discussed this last night. Our, our wine diva, Leslie Miller, talks about this. And the, the general feeling that you do not, and you taste everything. I mean, you've had every, the fancy, I call it shishi poo poo wine, mm -hmm. down to four buck chuck. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, first, give me a dollar. What do you think is, give me a dollar figure, the most expensive wine you think you've tasted? Um, well, it, I think, I know for sure I've had bottles that were $2,000 a bottle. Uh, okay, <laughs> but you said, we don't have to feel bad mm -mm. about enjoying a $15 bottle of wine. No, I mean, I think the sweet spot, honestly, is 20 to 25. But if your favorite wine is $15, have at it, drink it, it's good, you know. But there, there are a lot of wines out there that are made very commercially and broadly, and that's why they're so cheap. You might do better to research and find a wine that is made with more careful winemaking and uh, just potentially a little better quality just for a few dollars more. And you love it. Annie's so good. You, you had during the pandemic, you <laughs> turn this into, you love talking to people going, what's your favorite movie? You asked us that last yeah. night. We were ordering, you asked Lisa, you're like, what's your favorite, you know, what star are you liking right now? How do you, why, why does that matter? You know, it lets me know, like first, I, I do like to know what you, what do you normally drink? Yeah. If you say I really like red blends, okay, I'll start there. But um, I, I want to get a sense of who you are. Are you adventurous? Uh, I once mm. had a, a customer, I work part-time at a wine shop, Flatiron Wines in New York, and a customer came in and said, I'm doing Friendsgiving, I don't know what to get. And I said, all right, if, if your friends were a genre of movie, would it be action, romance, a think piece? And he said, oh, that's a good question. Um, a murder mystery. And I went, boop, here's the wine for you. <laughs> Your friends yeah, are it, interesting. It doesn't matter what it tastes like. It matters that you're adventurous, you're fun, you might be a little dark, you know. We'll end where we began, and that is your quest. You would like, now look, you're not going to say no if it's reversed, but ideally you would like your last one to be New York. Am I right on I, that? I do. I started in New York, so I think there's a nice symmetry to finish in New York. And, and you know, it's a, it's a per, very personal quest, this is. So to end in my hometown is would be great. You feel good about it, don't you? Don't you think you're going to... I think you're going to do it. I don't know why I wouldn't do it. Thank you. But I've been doing it for 15 years. It's taken a really long time to we'll get. We'll make it happen. Yeah. We make it happen. <laughs> speaking you. of New, uh, speaking of New York, we we found out you had an interesting almost encounter with Alex Rodriguez. Because <laughs> around he owns the part owner of the Timberwolves right. now, so we see him all the time. So yeah. Well, I was singing for the Baltimore Orioles and they were hosting the Yankees. And right before I was singing, I was standing with my back to the edge of the warning track. And I saw A-Rod and Robinson Cano were warming up and so they were throwing and getting farther and farther apart. And, war and all of a sudden, A-Rod launches a ball and I see it coming straight from my head like it has my name on it. And I, I'm backed up against the, the corner and I can't see and I, I don't know how to get out of the way so I just duck. And I was thinking, everything went through my brain. If I get beamed by a ball, I won't be able to sing the anthem here. <laughs> But I'll probably get an autographed A Rod ball. Yeah. And luckily, Robinson <laughs> Cano swooped down and picked it up. And the next, I look up from my crouch, and he was holding it in his glove, and he goes, "I got it." <laughs> like I wouldn't, like I wouldn't catch it. Yeah. You know? This is what I do. Yes. Uh, that anthem was a little sweaty. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Have either of the, your final parks? Have you? Obviously, you've tried. You know what? But you know, you're, you're going to know what I mean. 
Has there been progress over the 15 years? I mean, a little bit. I've gotten in touch with the Angels, but they have a very rigorous selection process, more so than any other team in baseball. And they take it very seriously. And I just haven't been able to break through. It's frustrating, but I, I think I am a good quality performer, so I hope to do it someday. More rigorous than the Yankees even? Well, I mean, the Yankees kind of are just the Yankees, right? Even if yeah. you don't know baseball, you know the Yankees. So I'm sure they get people from all corners wanting stuff from them all the time. So they're just a little bit more maybe closed off. But the Angels are saying like we we really take our process seriously and I respect that, uh, but I just haven't been able to break in yet. What are you going to do? Because uh, this is we're not going to talk if when this happens, hopefully right after the show airs, <laughs> that would be great. But once this happens, what's the next dream? Um, well, I'm going to once it happens, I'm just going to enjoy some champagne. <laughs> um, but you know, I don't. I don't have a dream. Like, and I, when I started this process, there wasn't social media really. It was that long ago, and I. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and, well, yeah. So this wasn't. This was never an attempt to like. Oh, look at this cool thing I'm doing. Like, follow. But so I'm. I don't need to have any next step. I don't need a fanfare. It's just been a really beautiful experience to honor our country and sing the national anthem for all of these teams and to get to share that experience with so many people. I estimate I've sung for about a million people. Um, and, and it just means a lot to me. So I'm, I'm just happy to quietly step away and so thank you. Other than airing this, um, should we tweet them? Like, what can we do? I, I mean, can we bother them? Sure. Like, what should we do? Yeah. I, I don't want them to get annoyed. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me um, just say it, because if we tell, the, our viewers are so good, What I mean, we could tell them to go buy a zebra, and they'll go buy a zebra. <laughs> so whatever we tell, they're going to help you out. So we'll. Well, if anyone knows anyone, somebody yeah. knows someone, right? That's, but if yes. anyone knows anyone who can help me get my foot in the door, or they know someone who wants to write about it, or continue talking to me about it, sharing the story, that would be great. Repost this yeah. when this is posted on our socials. That can be step one. Give it up for Annie, everybody. Oh, Annie's wine you. website is winemakesannie.com for more on her anthem quest and everything else Annie. I like that. Her <laughs> personal website is anniehedgerton.com. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back to wrap things up. Back in a moment. Thank you, my love. That was lovely. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. We're wrapping things up on this Tuesday. It is time for the world's shortest segment. Today, the hunt for a giant red spoon. Someone <laughs> stole a 15 foot tall red spoon from a Dairy Queen in Phoenix. <laughs> this is not a joke. It disappeared over the weekend and hasn't been seen since. Police don't have any spoon sus suspects, but uh, maybe they should be on the lookout for someone eating a gigantic blizzard. That's oh, right. But I'm but um, we're here all week, folks. We'll be right back <laughs> to wrap things up when we return. <laughs> and we're back. Hey, y'all. Hi. Butter and oil. Mm -hmm. If you want to be in the audience, uh, all you have to do is go to eventbrite.com or download the Eventbrite app. And let me tell you, y'all have been great. For, it used to be a joke. Mm -hmm. I used to, uh, we had a different audience system, and we every day people would sign up and then uh, people wouldn't show up. Right. Ever since we went to Eventbrite, it's been fantastic. Much so, more yeah, efficient. pick a date. Pick a date that you can actually show up. Uh, eventbrite.com, search for The Jason Show. You pick a date. We've made it very easy. They send you reminders, and we'll see you in the audience soon. Right now, though, it's time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. Kendall and I don't know what's in the segment until I read it live right now. Today, a loyal dog comes home, comes to the aid of his owner. The dog owner was taking part in a jujitsu competition in Chile. Um, after his opponent pinned him down, the worried dog jumped into action, coming to the mat to help. Aww. You can see the dog put his arms around the guy in white. The dog didn't attack the opponent and was carried gently off the mat. Oh. Okay. That's, now that is about the sweetest thing. It looks like a Newfie. Newfoundlands are known to kind of be like that. Like they're very loving and large dogs, but they were originally like sailing dogs. They would save people who fell overboard and then they'd kind of, we used to have Newfies growing up. But that makes sense. So they're like, get off my human. It's cute. 
Well, I, I, know, I have a lot of Newfie knowledge. Sorry. I, no, I'm not. I feel not. like I'm on Lucky they Dog. Have I, what is this? It's CBS Saturday mornings. It's Lucky Dog with Kendall. Uh huh. I love it. Thank you. You got any more dog fun facts? We have 15 seconds. Uh, no, I'm good. Tomorrow, Leslie Miller will join us. Cheap bubbles for Easter and more wine myths exposed. That's right. But right now, that's <laughs> going to do it for us. If you're watching, and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> 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 <laughs>